my name is Tiffany Borland and I will be talking to you about theories of cognitive, moral, and faith development. Um, for the cognitive and moral development parts, we will kind of be looking more at Jean Piaget's theory and then for the faith development, we'll look at James W. Fowler's theory. Um, the theories of cognitive and moral development kind of describe the way that thought and moral reasoning are developed in us through infancy and all the way through adulthood. Uh, Jean Piaget was a psychologist and kind of the pioneer behind child development. Um, in his theory of cognitive development, he really looked at the way that environment kind of influenced the way that we mature and not just the way that our heredity and genes kind of play a role in that. Um, so we'll start with cognitive development, and uh, this mostly has to do with intelligence, and um, Piaget kind of claimed that children play a huge role in creating their knowledge about the world. Um, they do this through action and kind of interacting with different objects. And uh, he also claims that there are biological factors that influence this um, idea and intelligence, but uh, it in turn, it makes the brain kind of like any organ which adapts to its environment. So the way he kind of lays this out is in, in stages. So it goes from birth all the way up to age 15. And then after that, I mean, there's still some development happening, but most of it's kind of in those early stages. So the first stage is sensory motor period. And that starts between birth and around age two. I mean, every child will be different, but that's kind of the, the range. Um, it's the reflexive stage. So it moves more into object permanence, and then that moves more on into memory. So um, stage two is the pre-operational period. This happens between ages two and seven. Um, the stage is kind of split into two different parts. So from ages two and two to four is the preconceptual period. And this is when um, children kind of develop language and intuitive play. Um, and then moving on from that, there's an intuitive period which happens between ages four and seven. And this is the development of numbers and classifications and stuff like that. And a big part of um, interrelationships happens during this stage. Stage three is more, um, it happens between ages of seven to 11, and it is the concrete operation stage. This is the primacy of reason over perception, which in turn creates logical thought. Um, stage four is between ages 11 and 15, and it is the last stage and it is the formal operation stage. And this stage deals with abstract thought and scientific reasoning. And children are just more capable of problem solving during these, these ages. Um, so moving on to moral development, uh, this is kind of when children learn what societal norms are and the rules are within their society. Um, they internalize those rules and they learn how those rules kind of intertwine with their own values of what they've already kind of started to um, develop. But when the rules become internalized, so once they really kind of know what those rules look like, the children really no longer use external sources for reward or punishment. And Piaget's theory of moral development starts with children kind of understanding what right and wrong is, and it's molded by their cognitive awareness, which is kind of where the cognitive development part flows into the moral development part. Um, for faith development, this is where we're going to talk about James W. Fowler. Um, he was a professor of theory and ethics and human development as well. He took a lot from Piaget's cognitive and moral development, and uh, he kind of created his, his own stages of what faith development looks like. Um, stage one is the primal faith stage. It happens during infancy, and this is kind of when children understand that they are dependent upon their caretakers and uh, it can lead to a trust about the universe. Um, on the other end of it, so if children um, have kind of more of a harmful experience during their infancy, 
then it can result in like more arbitrary ideas about an undependable God. Um, and then stage two is from early childhood to about the age of two again, uh, or it starts about the age of two. And um, it is the intuitive projective faith. And this is when children are building kind of their imagination and fantasy. And uh, they are learning to give power to family members and are more aware of who those family members are also giving power to. So if they're talking about God a lot, that's kind of what those children are learning as powerful. Um, stage three is mythic literal faith. And this happens between ages six and adolescence and beyond too. So from this point on, all of these um, stages can continue to happen throughout um, adulthood and and such but uh so this stage three um it's more has to deal with children in their community so whatever whatever parts of faith that are shaped by the community that the child is in is kind of what they're going to start believing and um so say their family does believe in god um then they kind of view that god as a being who gives out punishment and rewards Stage four is the next stage. It is synthetic conventional faith, and this is from adolescence and beyond. Um, Self-reflection happens in this stage, and the meaning of life in this stage happens as well as significant relationships. Uh, Fowler believed that most adults never go past this stage, so that is something to think about. But um, And then we move on to stage five, and it's individuate and reflective faith. This happens between young adulthood and beyond as well. And um, this is when people start to question what their beliefs are and what they have been told. Um, it's more of like a critical reflection of faith and values and their beliefs. Um, they kind of really start to think, is it true or am I kind of questioning what I was told? Um, Stage six is conjunctive faith, and this happens in early midlife and beyond. Um, this is where commitment to particular beliefs and values kind of happens. So people really get set in what they believe. And then uh, there is also something really cool that happens during this stage, and people become more open to other people's faiths and beliefs as well. Um, stage seven is universalizing faith, and this happens from midlife and beyond. This is the final stage and it involves a sense of love and justice that includes all people and all beings. And um, very few people reach this stage, but I think it's it might be something to look more into. Um, so for my real life example, I want to talk about um, kind of the work that I did. So I worked with adolescents in a group home setting. Um, I first was working with adolescent girls in a therapeutic group home, and then I also was working at a co-ed shelter group home for adolescents. And there was something that was pretty phenomenal to me that I noticed in a majority of these kids that came from abusive or neglective households. Um, whatever they suffered, they still had like an overwhelming love and appreciation for their caretakers, whoever was abusing them or neglecting them. They still saw those people as just amazing and incredible and people that were willing to do whatever for them. And, uh, you know, looking at this through the stages of cognitive, moral and faith, like I, I see that they learned these actions from these people and which caused behavioral problems, which is a big reason why most of these kids were where I was working. But, um, and then, you know, whatever, whoever caused this to them, they would understand what it looked like if they were talking to someone else and, and seeing how that has affected them, but they never really saw it as something that was happening to themselves. Um, they had a lot of faith and trust in these people who had abused them. And uh, I think that each one of these theories kind of goes hand in hand with what these kids were dealing with. Um, they were unaware of any other life and they believed so much in these people that hurt them. And uh, 
I'm sure, you know, this will have an impact on them as adults, but watching them as teenagers and having that belief that, you know, the, the world wasn't as bad as, as maybe we saw it was, it's just a, a powerful thing that uh, I witnessed. But yeah, that is the theories of cognitive, moral, and faith development. And thank you for listening.